Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're at out here on this fine third uh, Wednesday, excuse me. It is the Earthmaster out here, October 9th, 2024, about 11.09 a.m. California time here. Latest activity on the Earthquake 3D globe shows a 1.2 there into Northern California. We'll get to the earthquake activity here in just a minute. Want to chat about a significant uh, space weather event coming up here. Not tonight, but looks like tomorrow night and possibly into Friday night as well. So we're talking about Thursday night, Friday night. Significant aurora potential coming up with KP index up around the 8 level. Now the scale itself only goes up to a 9. So we're talking about G4 storming conditions. We could see auroras down into some locations that we've seen back in May of this year during the May superstorms, the solar superstorms there. I've seen the auroras for the first time in my life here in Northern California earlier this year, and that could be a repeat. Now, this is just the forecast here for a KP index of 8. Now, they are forecasting a 9 level for tomorrow night. Here's tonight. We're not expecting too much activity, a little bit of uh, residual uh, CME activity floating around there, hitting the planet that could spark auroras at the higher latitudes. But this is from the Earth-Directed X flare that popped off here yesterday a long duration X flare that blasted off a full halo CME in the earth directed view so a lot of plasma is headed this direction this is definitely uh, a guaranteed event I don't see this missing us at all like we've seen here over the past you know three or four nights where we had expected solar storming and it never materialized except for uh, not last night, but the night before. So a little bit late arrival on that CME. And uh, those CMEs were not really specifically Earth-directed. This one that is headed in our direction is 100%. So uh, KP index up around the 9 range. Um, G Potentially G5 storming conditions could pop up here if things play out as they are forecasted and if we get that bz component there of the interplanetary magnetic field uh tip south then we are talking about a significant aurora event for tomorrow night and potentially into friday night as well so we'll check back on that a little bit later on but there's the forecast uh getting bombarded right now by elevated protons here from the x flares that we've been getting uh, look at this flare chart here real quick. Let me show you guys the significance of this. There's our, uh, this was a long duration X flare, two X flares here on the Western limb a couple days ago. Uh, there's our earth directed X flare with a, uh, significant CME as well. This is the one that we're waiting for. This is just about 24 hours old. It shows it in the same day period because this is the, uh, the UTC day itself. This is a three day, but technically this was yesterday, our time, uh, UTC day in the same uh, period it looks like though. So we're waiting on the uh, plasma cloud from that significant X flare. Had another X flare here this morning, uh, an X 1.4 it looks like. Um, from let's see where that sun's or where that uh, popped off from, uh, but either way, our, our planet is getting bombarded here with uh, a lot of protons right now. A lot of proton energy coming in. Looks as though maybe that X flare may have been from a far side sunspot there on the western limb. Let's see, X 1.4. That's from 3842. So 3842 is going to be this area back over here, that uh, regional sunspot that is now, if you look at the latest image here, is now barely visible out on the western limb. So we have uh, a number of sunspots currently facing us. The X flare here from yesterday is from this source. Um, significant event, large X flare with a subsequent CME. Um, really wasn't expecting it from this area, but it uh, produced it. A lot of complexity within this core, and uh, we got to watch this area back around here on the eastern quadrant of the sun as well for some uh, further large flaring. And of course, you know, if it seems like we've had a lot of X flares recently, we have uh, had quite a number of them here. If you look at the seven day forecast or the seven day uh, uh, backtrack here, that was a near X flare um, about seven days ago. We've had one, two, three, four of them so far. 
uh, all on the earth facing side of the sun with the most significant one uh, yesterday and uh, again we're waiting on that plasma cloud to uh, hit us tomorrow night but there is a global delayer absorption map showing the polar regions getting hammered completely hammered with protons and of course those are shot off from the sun during large events like we've seen here in the last couple days and uh, they do have somewhat of a dramatic effect on communication systems and uh, navigation systems but primarily right there in the red but uh, I don't know how many viewers are out there in Greenland or Iceland or up north uh, even down in Antarctica but uh, that uh, could spell some issues there for communication systems there get some radio blackouts going on uh, uh, in these areas the sunlit side of the earth not so much going on mainly limited to the polar regions so the flare threat remains elevated here 30 percent chance obviously we're popping with flares x flares 75 percent chance for c uh m flare c flare around 99 percent chance or so and uh, let's see what we got here for the uh earthquake activity we'll check out the hurricane milton activity here in just a little bit southern california a couple spotty earthquakes out here um and even a couple earthquakes above 2.5 today uh, the latest one a 2.7 on the san jacinto fault zone three pointer a little bit further south here on the imperial fault uh, looks like we got a little swarm going on here uh, in that same area this is extreme southern end of well the border side uh, baja california here got a little swarming on the imperial fault so we're gonna have to watch that that could extend up here towards the san andreas fault uh, it's just literally a, a, a stone throw away uh, from the San Andreas Fault here in terms of uh, geologically speaking. So we'll watch that. Things may be starting to get elevated here across Southern California. Uh, so that's something to watch here pretty closely. A couple smaller earthquakes up north around the, let's see here, Santa Paula area off on the, which fault system? San... Cayetano fault it looks like a little lengthy fault system here uh, a little bit of swarming out there across the Fontana area as well from yesterday and today just uh, be safe be on guard out there some elevated movement here recently and it's just I feel it's it's not it hasn't gone away just get these little periods of quiet spells and then uh, things start to ramp up again Pacific Northwest relatively quiet um intermountain west areas typical movement i don't see anything of any major concern a little three-pointer near stanley idaho on the sawtooth fault system out here yellowstone national park nothing showing up but i do want to double check the yellowstone overviews here and see what we have <clears throat> not a whole lot in terms of earthquake activity out here so it looks like that's going to be the three-pointer from earlier in Idaho. Texas, Oklahoma, I mean, just a handful of smaller quakes out there. Nothing major going on. Uh, if we look at the last 24 hours here of the largest activity, well, that's going to include a lot of events from yesterday here with that five-pointer in Alaska. The latest one... Uh, in today's time period, it, it's going to be this 4.6 here across the uh, Japan area. Another earthquake up here, fairly recent, 4.5 within the last hour at the south, or northern end of the Curl Camp Chatka Trench. Aside from that, uh, somewhat quiet out here uh, in terms of you know earthquake activity. This globe right here, uh, I'm still waiting on an update from the developer i'm unable to combine these feeds out here normally you can you can take the usgs <clears throat> and um, mix it with uh, another agency here but even so i can't even access the emsc data out here on the globe it, it won't let me something's going on with the servers here so that's a bummer because normally we're able to see all the smaller twos and threes and some smaller fours out here across the rest of the globe which we're not able to so i'm having to keep it on the usgs chart for now uh, and limiting it to uh, the last 24 hours out here and as you can see worldwide activity 
in terms of larger scale movement is somewhat quiet out here but you know that that doesn't tell the whole story we could be seeing a whole bunch of swarming out here in the three range somewhere and usgs won't pick up on it because it's below the threshold of the 4.0 international uh, level so i'm waiting on an update from this i'll see what happens here over the next couple days hurricane activity we got uh we got a major hurricane out there All right hurricane milton Right now, uh, category, well, it's, it's uh, losing a little bit of steam here, 130 mile per hour sustained winds, but that's still a uh, fairly powerful hurricane, not category five anymore, that's for sure. Uh, it is getting awfully close here to the Florida area. It is expected to, well, hit this area later today. This is 2 p.m. Uh, Wednesday, so this is gonna be Eastern time here, it looks like. So over the next few hours, you know, these guys are probably already feeling the effects of it. Let me see what we got for the uh, uh, radar out here. Yeah, we're already getting a bunch. Of, look at all these rotating supercells out here. You can see the structure in them. A lot of tornado activity stirring up out here. In fact, there's a tornado watch. Numerous large tornadoes being reported across this area of Florida. Those are the convection bands there that get those, uh, those thunderstorms uh, rotating and uh, that's no joke here's the area of circulation out here just offshore <clears throat> now it looks like let's see where this is headed yeah it's still got a little northward track here but to me it almost looks like it wants to head south of the tampa area but if you look here on their forecast it's still showing a uh yeah, potentially just south here of the Tampa Bay region, that line. As you can see, Tampa Bay sits right about here. Uh, either way, it's still an expected strong hurricane. Uh, let me go over and check out the latest infrared satellite imagery here. Uh, it's starting to, uh, looks like it's starting to re-strengthen a little bit here. Notice that eye wall had uh, disappeared but we're starting to regain a little bit of strength here so we'll watch that still 130 mile per hour sustained winds with re uh, with a redevelopment here of the eye wall heading off probably going to hit right about here the eye wall uh, just south of the tampa bay area yeah model forecasts here show <clears throat> that it should decline fairly rapidly once it uh, hits the Florida area uh, with most of the models here predicting uh, a category four probably at landfall and then obviously diminishing after that so uh, just be safe out there a lot going on uh, hopefully everyone took all the warning seriously and is away from the entire region out here because it's gonna be a, a dandy of a storm regardless we you know 130 mile per hour sustained winds or 157 it's Still going to be fairly, uh, you know, catastrophic in damage terms out there. All right, uh, we'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later. A little spike of an earthquake on Barrett. That's in Southern California. Uh, down around the San Diego area. That's probably going to be this earthquake right about here. A little point nine. But watch it. We've got swarming going on here in the Perial Fault. And that's, you know, even though that's south of the border that's still interconnected here in between this plate system this fault this uh plate boundary and uh we'll expect some maybe some further elevated activity in southern cal here soon with this decent movement down south there all right have a good one we'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later and of course we'll cover that space weather event here as we get a little bit closer but i think it's going to be a dandy of a storm i'm going to be out myself watching it tomorrow night here in northern california hopefully things are you know going to play out as it's forecasted i guess we'll see have a good one